Welcome to this is uh, Yom Kippur Shir, which is entitled Yom Kippur the New Me. And this is based largely on ideas that I heard from Shalom Rosny, who was in London a few weeks ago. I wasn't there at the time, I was in school, but um, someone sent me a recording. And uh, I want to just expand on some of the ideas that he said. Uh, for those listening online, please email me at j.golker at gmail.com and I'll send you the handout. Um, the starting point in the first box is a Gemara in Rosh Hashanah Tezayin, a well-known Gemara. The Gemara says, V'amir B'Yitzchak, Abad Varim Mekarin Gazar Dinashel Adam. There are four things which annul, which rip up a, a, a Gazar Din, an evil decree against the person. Elu Hein, these are the four things. Tzedaka, Tzaaka, Shinu Hashem, Vishinu Maisa. Let's go through each one, as the Gemara does, bringing Pesukim. Tzedaka, a person gives Tzedaka, that can avert an evil decree. Tzedaka, as the Pasuk says, with Tzedaka, Tatzil Mimoves, that Tzedaka can save a person from death. The Gemara gives the famous story of the daughter of Rabbi Akiva, who was getting married, and Rabbi Akiva knew. He somehow saw that uh, his daughter would, was destined to die uh, on the day of her wedding. And therefore, the day after the wedding, when she suddenly showed up to the Sheva Brachas, he was delighted to see her. He went over to her and said, did anything unusual happen to you yesterday? And she described how she took her sort of her hairpin out of the wool, which she uses like as a coat hanger. Um, and she took it out of the wool. The day after the wedding, all of a sudden, a snake came out with it. She'd pierced a snake and killed it. And that was the snake that was going to kill her. Says Rabbi Kiva to his daughter, did you do anything unusual that merited that zuchus that saved your life? And she, she explained that at her wedding, she noticed an Oni, a poor person who didn't have what to eat, and she took her own plate of food and gave it to him. Said Rebbe Kiva, Stalker Tatzel Mimavis. A few years ago, many years ago, Rabbi Roberts, or Pinchas Roberts Zatzal, uh, mentioned the following one, Yom Kippur, a remarkable story that happened in Yerushalayim. There was a very uh, poor Koilal family who was struggling themselves, and they get a knock on the door Thursday night. The wife was out, the husband comes to the door and says uh, he sees a poor person collecting for, for Stalker. And uh, the guy said, I'm, I'm so sorry, I don't have any spare money. He says, but do you have any food for Shabbos? And this uh, young, Koli young man, this young man, knew that he had two small chickens in the freezer. One he was going to take out later that evening to defrost, that Friday his wife would cook it for Shabbos, and one would be for next week. He's sort of backwards and forwards. Should I give the second chicken? I don't need it this week. We've got one for this week. Should I give it to him? He decides he's going to do it. He's going to give this second chicken in the freezer to this poor person. At least he'll have some food for Shabbos. He goes to the freezer. When he opens up the freezer, shock, horror, bizarre, he opens the freezer. His three-year-old daughter spills out of the freezer. Baruch Hashem alive. What had happened? The kids were playing hide-and-seek. And she thought a few, about a few minutes earlier, she's got a great hiding place. She's going to hide in the freezer. No one's going to see her. It's a stall standing, standing freezer. She opens the freezer. She's a little girl. She climbs into the empty area at the bottom of the freezer and she closes the door. But because of the suction, she suddenly realizes she gets a bit scared. It's dark. She's now finding a bit, bit nervous and a bit hard to breathe. She tries to push open the door, but she can't do it. Rachman it would have been an absolute tragedy. But Bar Hashem, the father came at that, you know, a few moments later to open the freezer door and Bar Hashem. Uh, tragedy was averted, and that was another example of Stalker Tatz and the Mavis. So that's the first of the Arba Dvarim at Makarin Gzadinishal Adam. The second continues the Gemara is Tsaaka. Tsaaka means Tfila, crying out, that they, they cry from Hashem, to Hashem in, a, in, a, in, a, in their time of distress. Like Rishbrok takes them out from their tight situation, from their straits. That's the second thing. Shin Hashem. The third thing is. The changing your name. Tchsev Sorai ish tcholei sikra shemo Sorai ki Sorai shemo Sorai undergoes a change of name and Baruch Hashem her muzzle change. Tchsev beirachti yosa for gam no sati men lachoben etc. And the third and the fourth and final thing is shinim meisa tchsev vayar lekim es maasehem. Hakadosh Baruch Hu sees their actions, not their tefillas or their fasting, but Hashem sees es maasehem. So you see shinim meisa person changes their ways then that, uh, that can be Korea Gazar Din. Now, you learn this Gemara. At first level, it seems that there are four separate ways to annul an evil decree. But perhaps they are actually one. And what is the one common denominator? The common denominator is that each of them is saying, it's a different me. It's not the old me, it's the new me. How so? Let's go through each one. Shinumaisa. On that Gemara, Shinumaisa, Rashi says, what is Shinumaisa? Shav mira osoi. A person stops from doing evil. 
Says the Ritva on this Gemara, Pirish Rashi Shov Mir Osoi, Vlo I don't think that's correct shot. To Hapshita Shem Eina Shov Midarkoi, that if a person doesn't abandon his evil ways, then Katovil Vesheretz Biyodehu. It's as if he's going to the mikveh with a sheretz, a source of tumah. It's not going to help. As soon as he comes out from the mikveh, he's holding the sheretz. He's, he's still tomeh. And therefore, if he hasn't abandoned those evil ways, then tshuva is not going to help him. And therefore, the correct interpretation says the ritva in understanding what shinu is. Even voluntary things. Which are not so appropriate who mashane, he stops doing that. I'm a different person. I've chosen not to do these gray areas and I've changed my whole perspective. I'm a different person. They've changed their whole perspective. I'll give you an example. You know, one of my proudest moments in Chinuch, Baruch Hashem, over many years, is some years ago, I was heading towards my shirim, and one of our hype educators, the informal educators, comes up to me and says, tell me, is so-and-so in your shir? So I say, yes. He says, let me just tell you what happened. A young man, a fine young man, was on the way to come to my shir, and he looked a bit agitated. So the informal educator went over to him and said, is everything okay? And he said, yeah. So he said, well, you look a bit agitated. What's the problem? He said, I, I need to find a cup. So he said, why? So he said, he's holding a bottle of water. So he says, well, just drink from the bottle, he said. So the guy said, I can't. So he said, why not? He said, because I'm in Rabbi Golkashi and I know he doesn't like it. Now, interesting. It so happens he's right. I don't think it's so appropriate, so refined to drink directly from a bottle. And I drink a lot. I always have a sore throat in the shir. So I have a bottle of water next to me, but I have a cup, a glass, and I pour from the water into the glass. And I've never said a word to these kids. I didn't say anything about not drinking from the bottle. That's my particular thing that I don't like drinking from a bottle. I don't think it's so appropriate. But I never said that. But he, by osmosis, had seen me pour the bottle into the water and drink from a cup every day, not drink from the bottle. He knew that, I never said it to him, but he knew that that was a thing that I didn't think was nice. And therefore, he was agitated because he was trying to look for a cup on the way to the shir because he knew that he couldn't drink from the bottle in front of me because I knew I wouldn't like it. In a way, that is good chinuch because I never said it to them, but I was role modeling a certain hanhaga. Now, that's an example of a devar There's no issa to drink from a bottle. People do it. You know, a lot of people do it. But it's perhaps, uh, it's, it's considered a shinu maisa, says the Ritva, because it's a different way of operating. There's a certain refinement, it's, it's not clear-cut, and therefore your chain, you know, I would say to the kids, a Ben Torah wouldn't drink like this. And therefore, it's a certain perspective, it's a new me. I am categorized myself, I identify as a Ben Torah, and therefore that's not the way of behaving. So that could be shinu maisa. Amazingly, Rav Cook says, that we say in Ovinu Malkeinu, What does Tshuva Shleima mean? What does it mean exactly? So it says Rav Kook, very Gishmak, the source, the clue, is in the next one. The next one says, Shlach Rufuah Shleima L'choyli Amecha. What is Rufuah Shleima? He, he, give an example. You can go to a doctor and you say, Doctor, my back's hurting me. He examines you and he says, Yep, yeah, I know what the problem is. You need to wear insoles in your shoes. But doc, it's my back that's the problem. It's not my feet. The doctor says, Yeah, but that's just a symptom. The root of the problem is in the feet, and he'll give you new insoles, and that's dealing with the root of the problem. Well, so too with tshuva. If a person, let's say, doesn't bench with kavana, the problem is not just, you know, you need to bench with kavana. The problem is more, is bigger than that. You've got to go to the root cause. The, the, the not benching with the kavana is just a, a symptom. The root cause may not be realizing or focusing enough that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives me everything, provides me with whatever I need, and I'm not, I need to have a better understanding of that and to thank Him for it and be grateful for it. So that is the root problem, and, I, and it just manifests itself and I just don't bench properly. Therefore, Tshuva Shlema is going to the root of the problem. And therefore, that really is what Shinomaisa is talking about. It's changing my whole perspective. It's becoming a new, different person with a different outlook, a different perspective. That's number one, Shinu Maisa. Shinu Hashem. Well, you know, you sometimes hear about it. Boys, they go to Yeshiva as Rabbi, uh, as, as um, uh, uh, you know, he goes as Eric. And then he comes back as Meir Simcha. What does that mean? He has a different essence, a different worldview. And of course, you don't need, you don't need to change your name for that. But the point is that it's a different perspective. And that's what the Ran says the, on, on this Gemara. Shinu Hashem. Meshane Shmoi v'tayme de milsa de Shinu Hashem goyrim loy lasus tshuva she yome beliboy ani oiso ish. 
I'm a different person. I need to change my outlook. So you see that Shin Hashem literally means I'm a different person. I, I, I just see things differently. It's not the old me. Tzoka, crying out, tefillah. The Sefer Igrim, the very famous Sefer Igrim, deals, he grapples with the famous question of, of tefillah. What's the purpose of tefillah? Let's look at through to, uh, in the Sefer Ikram inside. This is in my Medalad Perik Yutres. A lot of people question the, the whole concept of tefillah. And some of them, is, their, their questions are very questionable themselves. What's the point? HaKadosh Baruch has decreed that a person should get this. So who are you to interfere? If it was decreed on the person, then you don't need to And if it wasn't decreed, Why? How are you going to change God's mind? If Hashem decreed it, that's for the best, that's what you need. And if He didn't decree it, then what's the point anyway? And therefore it says, in other words, the Sefer Ikram is saying, this was decreed on you at that stage in your life, at that particular junction. And therefore, if a person davens and changes himself, then we are meant to be a different person. Then the Gezerah won't be on that person. That, says the Sefer Ikram, is what Tefillah does. Tefillah doesn't change God. It changes us. We're meant to be different people. And therefore, the gazera, the decree, the lot on one person, if he improves himself, then that can have, that's how he can be Korea Gzardin. That's what the Gemara means by Tsa'oka. Tfila, by the way, when it says Tsa'oka, it doesn't just mean davening. It could be a host of things, saying brachas. You know, a person once came to Rishlema Zalman, he said he needed a Yeshua. So he came to the Rishlema Zalman Arbach, the God Ladar, for help. He said, what sugula should he take on? Should he daven at the Kotel for 40 days, etc.? Shlomo Zalman says, I don't paschal or dispense sugulas, but let me tell you what I do. I focus, when I've got a difficult situation, I try and improve my brachas. Just imagine, we say mer brachas b'chol yom, 100 brachas a day. Imagine if we picked five brachas to say with real kavona. We'd be different people, whatever it may be. I remember Asher Yotza, one, one time when I was in yeshiva, I went on the Purim to the Ar Sameach Purim Spiel. I was learning in the Yeshiva. It was nearby. I thought I'd go. It was meant to be fantastic. And it was very, very good. I remember there was a skit. There was a scene where a guy begins the play and he's standing at the back and he goes to the bathroom and he's standing outside and he's with a lot of kavon. He's saying Ashayotz and he says it slowly. And then the sort of the camera goes on, the one of the camera, the, the lights goes on to the main show, or whatever it was. And then at the end of the show, it goes back to this guy like a Baltruva. He's uh, saying, he's finishing Asher Yotza. It took him two hours to say, to say Asher Yotza. We look at it as it's like a, a, a comedy that if a person says Asher Yotza with a lot of Kavona, sometimes a person davens with Kavona, says a broch with Kavona, you think, what's wrong? Is he okay? Rosen said something very interesting. He was in Beis Medrash. A person he never met before, he sees a guy walk in, go down to his seat open a siddha, and he's about to make a broch. He's thinking, where's the food? What broch is he making? But he says, Asher Yotza, from a siddha with, you know, with beautiful kavona. That's a holy Jew. He, he, he comes back to the Beis Medrash to say that broch of Asher Yotza from a bencher. That is really what Sa'oka is. Sa'oka is, as the Sefer Ikram says, we're not changing God, we're changing us. We are becoming a better and different person. The last one is Sa'oka. Sa'oka is not just about money. Sa'oka is changing ourselves. Famously, the Chinuch says in the midst of, in Parshish Mishpatim, in Kesef, Mitzvah Samech Vav, this is paragraph number four at the bottom there, Shorish HaMitzvah, the root of this Mitzvah, as the Chinuch would often say, the reasons behind the Mitzvahs, Sherotz HaKel Yos Beruav Melumdim Umurugalim B'Midas HaChesed Rachmim. It's for us to become bigger and better people, to become Bali Chesed, Ki Himidim Meshubachas, and through us becoming giving kinder people, and therefore we can become more worthy of receiving Hashem's brachas. It's about the giver. It makes him a different person. Avram Avinu, the beginning of Pashas Vayera, the Pasuk says, he's sitting there, Kachom Hayoim. Rashi says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu takes the sun out of its protective coat, so that Archim will be too hot for them to come, and it will protect Avram Avinu. But Avram Avinu is more distressed that Archim are not coming. That Malachim come in the guise of men. Ramesh and Drash Moshe says, it's remarkable. If guests 
um, uh, if, he, if there were guests were there and he was too weak to bring them in, I can understand. But there are no guests, and why are you upset about it? The point in this Rashi is that Avram Avinu was such a Baal Chesed, he wanted desperately to do Chesed. It's like the guy in the back of the shul. And you go up to him, it's on a Wednesday morning, you say, hey, you're looking a bit down, what's up? He says, it's not Shabbos. Okay, so it's not Shabbos, what can you do? But that's a person who loves Shabbos. A person who loves Chesed, he's distressed that he can't do the Chesed at that moment. The bottom line is, what you see from these four things, that there are four things which are career the Gazar Din. They're not four separate pathways. All four of them, Shinu Maisa, Shinu Hashem, Tzaoka, Tzedaka, they change the person. I'm a different person. And that ultimately is what Rav Huna says is what the definition of Tshuva is. In Pachad Yitzchok, in his Maim Chavtes, in Rosh Hashanah, he says, Great Bali Musa in previous generations would say the following phrase in Yiddish. Tshuva is nisht der teich besser veren. Tshuva doesn't mean doing better. Tshuva is der teich anderish veren, being different, being a different person. For Zuhi Amira Tamsis, that's really what it's all about. So I think uh, there's been a gazar din over the Jewish people on a national level, sometimes on a personal level. The key is to be focusing on these four things, and that can be career the gazar din, not four different pathways. Shinu Maisa by changing our actions, by, by, by looking at things with a different, holier perspective. Shinu Hashem means choosing a different essence and worldview to align with the Ratzon Hashem. Tzaoka, not changing God's perspective, but changing our perspective. And Sadaka, it's about becoming a bigger and better person. These four things can be Korea Gazardin. Mitz Hashem, we should be Zoha to have a Gemara Chasimatova Lonu Ulchal Israel.